In this clip, we're going to have a look at some of the extrusion techniques when it comes to Turbo Smooth. So here I got a new scene, and in this scene, we're just going to go ahead and play with these cubes and see what we can get out of some of the extrusion techniques we got. So let's start with this one here. I'm just going to go ahead and straight away just add a Turbo Smooth modifier to it, just to see what it looks like. Let's actually isolate this. So once again, we have nice beveled cube, but what I want to do is I want actually for this side to be sort of more curvy but keep the rest of the sharpness here. So let's go back into editable poly. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this polygon and this polygon. We're going to click Control Shift E. That's to connect the vertices together. And I'm going to do the same here. And let's go ahead and see what we got with the topology here. So I'm just going to disable the isolation. So as you can see, we have more of a rounder shape now here on this angle. And that is because we're starting telling the 3ds Max that we want this to be curved because this, these two polygons here, they only connected with one edge instead of two. Now, the reason why this corner is still sharp is because we still have those two support loops. So let's go ahead and select these two support loops. And we're going to click loop, hold control backspace to delete them. And let's go back into Turbo Smooth. So now we have the shape we desired. Go ahead and add a few more increments and isolate. So here we have a very nice rounded shape. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about when it comes to Turbo Smooth. You have to learn how to control it. So if you learn how to control it, you're going to get amazing shapes out of it. Let's go ahead and explore more into these techniques. So here I have a little cube. And what I want to do is I want to have circular extrusion in the middle here. So let's go ahead and select this polygon here. I'm going to go ahead and click Bevel. So whenever you work with Turbo Smooth, you already know that you will need the support loop. So if I'm going to go into Bevel and just right about here, maybe a little bit more higher here, and just going to go ahead and click three times, I get the support loop straight away without actually going in and adding them. It just saves a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and click Inset and just got to add another one. So now if we're going to go into Turbo Smooth, out of your increments, we have this nice beveled edge here. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead into my edges. And actually, I want to go in and create this extruded circle here in the middle. So let's go ahead and connect these two loops. I'm going to put them to about 40. That should do just fine. And do the same here. So now I get more of a square shape here. And that's exactly what I want. Now, this part here, I want it to be a circle. So if I'm going to go into Turbo Smooth right now, as you can see, nothing resembles a circle here at all. So in order for us to add a circle here in the middle, all we have to do is actually click Inset. And here we go. We got a circle. So now I want to raise it up and create an extrusion. So let's go ahead and click Bevel. And once again, I'm going to do it three times so I have the support loop straight away. I'm going to extrude, and again, I'm only going to extrude a little bit at first. Click plus, then quite a bit, plus, and then a little bit again. So I'm adding these support loops by just extruding instead of going in and doing it one by one, which would take quite a while. I'm going to inset again, and again. And now we have this wonderful circular extrusion at the top. And the reason why it's not square is because we have absolutely no support loops on these edges while we have the support loops on the top. And that just basically tricks 3ds Max into thinking that this is supposed to be a cylinder and not a square. And these are the kind of techniques you should practice and master. And it will just help you a lot whenever you use Turbo Smooth or any other Mesh Smooth modifiers. So another cool trick we can do is let's go ahead to this one here. And that is individual polygon modeling. Although it's not always useful, it is quite a cool technique and it's worth learning. So I'm going to go in and I want to turn this into sort of like a grid. So I'm going to go in and actually go to the top view. And I'm going to select all of these middle polygons here. I'm going to go in and click inset. So whenever you click on the inset settings, you have these options here, group or by polygon. So I'm going to go in and click by polygon. So now each one of those polygons will inset individually. So let's click apply. And again, I'm going to bevel. This time I'm going to go down right about here. Let's do it three times, just like before. 
and let's go and extrude once again a little bit at a time first we do small one then we do big one and then we do small one and then let's inset it again and add two loops just just in case next thing i want to do is actually going to go in here and this is another cool technique with extrusion if you click extrude at the time it will be a directional extrude so everything will move one way but we also have local normals which will extrude it depending on the normal direction so we can go in and actually extrude the whole thing a little bit in now it's sometimes this creates sort of little problems like in this case we have a little bit of a not a straight line here so i'm going to go in and select polygons i'm going to click ignore back face and by angle selection so we have selected this side I'm just going to go ahead actually and extend this menu here so it's a little bit easier to work with and i'm going to go in and click y and that will basically flatten my polygons into one straight line so i'm going to do the same here but in this case i'm going to go x i'm going to go x again on this side and i'm going to go y on this side so i'm just going to deselect the ignore back face and by angle selection and just going to click on one of the polygons hold shift and click on the next one to select a loop so now I can go in and just squeeze it down a little bit. Just trying to create interesting shapes here. Next thing, I don't want the squares here to be that beveled. I want them to be quite rounded. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this vertex here and here. Click Control Shift E to connect them. And I'm going to do the same on every side here. And this one as well. And this one as well. And the next thing I'm going to do, select the edges, select these support edges over here, click loop, control backspace. Now, the reason why I use control backspace and not delete or simply backspace, if you click backspace, it will simply get rid of the edges while preserving the geometry. If you click delete, it will delete the edges and the geometry. If you hold control and backspace, it will delete the edges and the vertices aligned with them. That will just create a cleaner result. So now I'm going to go in and add a few support loops here. I'm going to go into my swift loop. I'm going to add one here, one here, two here, and probably two on these sides. Let's actually go ahead and select these three edges here and click ring and use connect instead. Connect is just a little bit cleaner way of doing it. You're just going to have exactly the same distance between the edges. That way you will have much cleaner result. So there we go. I think these ones, these two here are a little bit too much. So I'm going to select the loop over here and just scale it a little bit up. And I'm going to go in and add the last two loops over here. So let's add turbo smooth and see what we have. These kind of details are really great and you can use them for pretty much everything. You can create floor pieces, you can create fences. It's just a great way to do the bipolygon modeling when it comes to turbo smooth, just to create these interesting details. and. And whenever I work with the sci-fi pieces, I always try to integrate those little things everywhere I can, just because I like them so much. So this is it for this clip. In the next clip, we're going to have a look at how we can use normal directions when it comes to Turbo Smooth.